Welcome, Goomers, to another episode of Danganronpa. You're here with Goomers. Okay, the class trial is about to begin. I don't think I have a choice in the matter. I do not think I can go anywhere else. Ooh, it's 1040. So I am going to have to make sure my volume is not very high. Otherwise, I'll wake up my neighbor. Oh, the red door is Monokuma's room. Isn't this Monokuma's room? No, that is not Monokuma's room. That is the elevator room. Ahem. So, is everyone ready to... What? Am I blind or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko's not here. And Toko is... You really don't remember? Come on. Kidding, I'm just kidding. How could I forget that little nut job? <laughs> okay. She's a crucial part of the class trial this time. What are you gonna do? Okay, Doki, I'll go ahead and drag her out of her kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. What? And just like he said a few minutes later, he reappeared dragging Toko behind him. Why could we not see that? I told him I didn't want to, but he f forced me. I can't believe you would dare drag a girl around. <laughs> terrible. You're terrible. That's pretty scary. Phew. So now everyone's here, right? Okay then. Hustle onto the elevator and let's get the show on the road. <laughs> I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So, shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro. Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. Someone made the choice to kill a girl like that. Yeah, that's a pretty... Ugh. Anyways. <laughs> and that murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. Do I, like, pick who I think the murderer is? Because at the moment, it's looking like Toko or Byakuya. Oh yeah, she's crazy. <laughs> I gave you plenty to work with. Show us how far your logic can take you. Dick. Hey, Celeste. There is something odd about Toko's behavior. I do not think mere shock is enough to explain it. I agree. What do you think, Aoi? <laughs> I guess I wasn't much help at all on this one. You won't help on the last one either. Giddy giddy, you wanna help me out here? Shall we go? You're the only one that wants to start this. <laughs> I don't like very sad. Miss Fujisaki, I must admit, for being 3D, she was quite remarkable. Of course, just the idea of 3D makes me cringe. What's wrong with 3D girls? Seriously, dude, what's wrong with them? There's nothing wrong. I don't know why the killer did what they did, but I'm sure it'll work itself out. Justice always prevails, right, bro? What does your bro think? Hey, come on. Fucking Toko, man. Who's got her so worked up? Other than me. Sakura-chan, you Super Saiyan yet? Well, then. I will uncover the villain who performs such heinous acts on a weaker individual. Hmm. Hmm. You ready? We're doing this? Uh, do I just click the door? Let us begin. We have no choice, right? We have to do this. Ah, oh, she agrees with me. I gave a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walked towards the elevator on shaky legs. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get a handle on my motions, couldn't stop speculating. It begins. Is it just me, or like we had Sayaka standing next to Naigi last time, and everyone else is standing in the exact same positions they were last time? Are they essentially just gonna start removing people from the same photograph? <laughs> Are they gonna cut corners like that? <laughs> the steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. I'm guessing if I don't click anything, this elevator will just keep descending until eventually it hits the Earth's core and we all melt. 
and as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation, until finally, it came to a sudden stop. You see, I would be worried if the elevator didn't continue, because that would mean there's something wrong with the elevator. What do you think? I redecorated. Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Hm. Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Good, good. You're rip-ragging to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Okay then, let's get the show on the road. Thrills, chills, kills. Everyone, please find your assigned seats. We don't have seats. We stand there. Wait, do we have seats now? And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly fate, a deadly class trial. <gasps> <laughs> I'm trying not to ruin my hair. Yes. Wait, I had prep. Ooh! I didn't prep before the class trial. Oh shit. Please tell me I prepped. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I can prep. The bizarre class trial begins again. Why was Chihiro murdered? Is the killer hiding within the group? Ah, uh, yes. Is there any help to be found in this series of murders? Can we even prove it's a series? Okay, let's set the skills. We got cool and composed, steadies your aim uh, during the non-stop debate and the hangman's gambit. That is good. What else do we have? Oh, melodious voice. Increases damage to the opponent when a statement is destroyed. Effective during the bullet time battle. Yes. What else do we have? That's all we have? Ooh, we only have those two. Okay, let's open up the handbook. Truth bullets, what do we have? We have the Monokuma file, that's good. We have Sakura's account, good. We have the locker room dumbbell, yep, Mondo's account. Card reader, main hall ebooks, okay. Broken ebook, genocide jack files, Aoi's account. What did she say? Oh yeah, Chihiro was keeping distance, right? We remember that. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the boys' locker room carpet would have the unusual stain on it. The two locker room posters, which could be switched. Chihiro's e-handbook was not found on her corpse and has apparently gone missing. The status of the dead body was a blow to the head. Disappearing stain on the girls' bathroom. The library desk lamp with a missing extension cord, Celeste's account saying that she saw Chihiro uh, with a gym bag and a tracksuit, the Monokuma file, um, death being at 2am, body was discovered in girl's locker room on the second floor cause the death was a blow to the head, with a blunt object, which is probably the dumbbell, and Sakura's account saying she wanted to get stronger but never used the room while they were there. And then Mondo saying Chihiro had told everyone she wanted to get stronger. She had an inferior <coughs> inferiority complex. Well, I think we're as ready as we're gonna be. <sighs> okay, it begins. Let's see if we can do this right. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. Okay. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But, if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. It's so much better to do this in English. Okay then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon! It was the dumbbell. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Make your arguments. Genocide Jack case file, library desk lamp, locker room dumbbell. I think it was the locker room dumbbell. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According yep. to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? Uh, it was a dumbbell. I bet it was an iron pipe. 
No, there was no. Is that it? They're gonna make it that easy for us? Bam! Okay, I hit it. I have to aim in this game. I can't believe I have to aim. Yep, we got it. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? I think we can. It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. Yeah, and there's like five plates on each side. If they're two kilos, this damn thing would have been 20 kilos. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Isn't that the whole point of the investigation? To investigate the body? Yes! That's so creepy! Your life depends on it, Yamada. <laughs> Just like how she's like, idiot. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Yeah, you take over. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Let me ask, Genocide Jack. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to the non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines. So think of them as obstacles in your debate. Wait, so I gotta aim through these white lines and also hit the moving target? When the cross hit, oh, whatever. But there's a way to keep these white noise from getting in your way. Press the right mouse button to attach the silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease. So take careful aim when you have your silencer out. Oh, but if your action difficulty sends a gentle, white noise won't appear at all. In which case, you can forget about the silencer and just focus on the situation in front of you. Well then, good luck and have fun. Oh god. Yep. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on! There's just no proof for it! Hey, so, speaking of Genocide Jack, I don't know who that is! <laughs> of course you don't. Oh, is that it? The evidence that shows Genocide Jack is related to the case, it has to be... Oh, so that's the, the thing I have to... Is Genocide Jack. I'm sure. Case Whoops. closed. As far as Bam. I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Bam! Why? What makes it impossible? Bam! Well, I mean... Come on! There's just no proof for Bam. it! Bam! Boom! Yeah! No, it's wrong! Did he just say C-U-N-T? That's bad. You don't say that. I might know one reason he could be involved. One reason? What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. Of course there's gonna be a confidential police file. It's on an open case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? That is a good question. The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. Ooh. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. Boob lust? And why did your voice change? And why is your head going? Is he playing with himself by any chance? Maybe. Uh, no. 
It's actually bloodlust. <laughs> but more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? I thought you were taking care of this. You're the characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know. I got it! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. <gasps> Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. You sure about that, buddy? So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? Uh, maybe the same way you do, because it was in the freaking library in the school. <laughs> There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. Oh, they just went to the library. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? No. Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. Ooh. Well, she has been acting really weird, so I wouldn't put it past her. Right. Why is this guy overreacting to everything? What? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko yeah. has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? One with a split personality? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this gotta be so complicated? Okay, you shut up until you say something useful for once. It does seem like a riddle in a way, but I feel like I can just about see it. Genocide Jack is Toko, but isn't Toko. What does it mean? Well, it means she has split personality syndrome, which explains why she's so crazy. Oh, Gambit. H I S. N. Uh. Hey, fuck, what is it? What is it? Oh my god. What am I shooting? Nobody seems to believe me. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Uh oh, we have already come to the end of the debate. Well then, the class trial is officially adjourned. Now it's time to reveal who's the blackened. Boop, 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 boop. Do we all die or something now? It would appear that the one with the most votes is Makoto. Why is Makoto the one with the most votes? However, Makoto is not the blackened. Looks like the real killer gets to graduate. I refuse to give up yet. Shut up, Makoto. Why do they always vote for me? Am I the most suspicious? I'm the most incompetent. Okay, let us begin again. Okay, Handman's Gambit. So the first letter is S. S. S something H-I. Sof. Sroch. Sai. Steel. What? Is it Z? It's not Z. Skits? Oh, Schizo. It's Schizo? Can you give me the whole yeah, word, not the abbreviation? It's schizophrenic. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? It's schizophrenic, not schizo. Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file too. This is so nub. They thought that the suspect might have, what did they call it? Dissociative identity disorder. Yeah, why don't you just give me that instead of sch schizo? Oh, okay, but still, to go and say that about Miss Fukawa is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> 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 to go and say that I've been perfectly acceptable. <laughs> Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. 
the one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality, it has to do with her behavioral change, I think. So you're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? Yeah, she went from being a complete biatch to everyone to being somewhat weird. That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... Her tongue was out, and, like, her face was all weird. I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> ah, is that a dead body? How are you, dead? Oh, wow. Okay, she's weird. She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom. A sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. Yeah, the whole voice change thing. Funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. I know, right? It's almost like she's a human being. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. <laughs> Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. Yeah, that's a bit odd. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can't. Hmm, how do split personalities even work? <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? Maybe? I won't let Genocide Jack have control. Oh, that explains it. I'll drive out the killer. Drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. Oh. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. Uh-oh, you're called red-handed. Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? <sighs> Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. Oh, here we go. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that is just casually what you slip into conversation when you're talking to a guy that you like. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? Trepidation, a new word I learnt. <laughs> ah, she looks a little upset. This is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said she wouldn't tell anyone. Uh-oh, she's triggered. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! This surprises you in a life or death situation? You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. So you're the type of guy that can't keep a secret if anyone tells you. You'd make a terrible criminal lawyer. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. Okay, now I agree with him on this one. <laughs> oh, triggered. Besides, you broke your promise first. Oh yeah, what was her promise? You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. Wait, you knew about this and you didn't tell anyone? You're a dick. But in spite of that promise... I'm sorry, I couldn't keep our promise. Ah, oh, shit. Don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. So you knew that Toko had a split personality and was a serial killer, and you didn't tell any of us that were basically living in the same school as her. This guy is a bigger dick than I could have ever imagined. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. Oh god, that is so sad. That's the only reason I promised. Okay, dude, did you seriously make that promise? How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. <laughs> but you weren't able to do it. 
You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But, but... Yeah, looks like it's case closed. But your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. Oh, wow. You sound like you're scolding her. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The huh? Person? Okay, now she's getting super weird. You don't mean... Uh-oh. Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed from across the courtroom. But in the next second... What? Well, hello there. Is it me you were hoping to see? What the fuck? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> You're standing next to her. So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill. Always a count has been added to the truth bullet section. Oh god, it's the class trial. Wait, I didn't even find a duffel bag. No! Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? No, I haven't done the investigation, you asshole. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. The class trial! But I'm not ready! You remember where to meet, right? No! Please go through the 